All right, guys, welcome back to Indoor Smokers. So we got a special treat for you guys today. I've had a lot of requests to bring back the stoned history, and we have a great one today. This is actually a very poignant story that I think pretty much everybody can relate with. So don't go anywhere, guys. It is the Battle of Fredericksburg and the Angel of Mary's Heights right after this. Oh, and I'm gonna be high for this, but you don't have to. Wouldn't hurt. <laughs> ah. <coughs> All right, guys. So as everybody knows, war is a particularly horrific and brutal thing and the civil war was even more brutal than most and the battle of fredericksburg was probably one of the most horrific battles during the civil war at least for the union troops so fredericksburg a city in virginia was part of the confederacy at that time and when the Union troops had actually pushed in initially to Fredericksburg, they'd had some success. This was one of the first examples of urban warfare. So the fighting was incredibly intense, even from the early go. But the Union troops were able to take the city of Fredericksburg and push the Confederate troops back up onto the hills behind the town. Basically, in the town itself, nobody had really been trained for urban fighting. So the Union troops were able to overwhelm and push the Confederate troops back. But now the Confederate troops had all consolidated up on the hillside, giving them the advantage of the high ground. And the Union troops knew basically they had the town, but the next morning they were going to have to go out and find the well-entrenched Confederate troops and fight on the actual battlefield. It was going to be a tough go from the beginning. Ended up being much tougher than anybody expected. Total in the Battle of Fredericksburg, the Union troops would lose 12,000 men compared to only 5,000 for the Confederates. But still, in one day, 17,000 men would lay dead on the battlefield. So as the Union troops pushed up onto the Confederate line, there was a point on one flank of the Confederate side called Mary's heights for some reason the union general seemed to think that was a weak spot they had heard earlier that some troops had been moved from there those rumors were proved to be false but at the time they focused a lot of the union army right at that point and started sending wave after wave of union soldiers to charge the hill none of it was successful the confederates had about 40 or 50 artillery pieces up there basically they said you couldn't have had a lone chicken running across that hill that could have survived that fucking barrage but amazingly, against all the odds, the Union troops keep coming and keep coming. The Confederate soldiers are actually starting to gain a little bit of respect for the Union troops as the day goes on. Because although they're killing thousands of them on the field, the fuckers just keep coming, man. They're relentless. They won't fucking turn. So they start to gain a little bit of respect for the Union troops as these two sides are getting closer and closer to battle as the Union troops push up. So finally, on one push up on that left side of the flank, a group of Union soldiers are able to push up to a fence line, not all that far from the Confederate stronghold. They're able to get down, make a stand, and for the first time all day, able to actually return fire. Up to that point, literally, the lines of Union soldiers had just been getting slaughtered as they came to the field. But of course, as soon as the Confederate soldiers start to see this, they start focusing everything, all the artillery and everything, down on this point. So this group of Union soldiers soldiers who managed to push up this far they can shoot back and they can shoot at the confederate line from where they're at but they can't retreat they can't go anywhere they're basically pinned down as night falls so this is like the worst position to be in they're way too close to the fucking confederate line there's no place to go but the worst thing of all was that on this brightly moonlit night 8,000 Union soldiers lay dead and dying across this battlefield and I don't think anybody a regular person today can even imagine the fucking horrific sights and sounds that something like that would be surrounded by men moaning and crying and calling out for their moms. I mean, if all you do is look in a book and read the details and see the numbers, you just cannot conceive what 8,000 bodies being torn apart, being hit by artillery, your guts and shit and blood and bone fragments scattered everywhere. Just the stench of all of those fucking dead and dying bodies and the fucking horses and everything in it. It's just got to be one of the most horrific scenes. But then the worst part of it is that the troops who are still out there lying wounded and dying, they're basically pinned down by the fucking Confederates who can see over the top. 
So you got soldiers who are actually trying to crawl back to the fucking Union line, the fence post, just so they can get some help, get water. They're just telling them, shut up, stay down, don't crawl, don't crawl, because as soon as they see something move, dude, they're picking it off. So basically, it just becomes a standoff for the night. It's horrific. You just fucking hear the moans and the cries, and nobody can do anything. The Union soldiers hear their buddies out there begging for them, calling for them to come out and help them. Can't do anything. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere... One of the fucking Confederate soldiers, a sergeant, 20-year-old sergeant, listening to this for hours, finally says, we got to do something for those soldiers. Shocks everybody around him. His other men are like, what? He says, give me a canteen. Fucking starts grabbing canteens from all of his men, gets a bunch of them, slings them over his shoulder, and that crazy fuck jumps over that fucking barricade and goes out into the fucking field and troops can see out in the moonlit night the shadow of a confederate soldier going out into the troops and of course they immediately think he's going out there to loot the body so they're like fuck man they're not even dead yet and he's already going out there to steal from them and they're just about getting ready to pick his ass off when they see him kneel down and start giving water to the wounded soldiers and so of course they hold off and they can't believe it man they're just shocked and the Confederate soldiers, they would have been well in their rights to shoot him too. He's basically providing aid and comfort to the enemy, which is a war crime. But none of them do. Now, if a Union soldier had gone out there and started doing that, I guarantee you the Confederates would have picked his ass off. But this is one of their own. This is a sergeant. So they're all stunned. And for hours, neither side shoots a single bullet while this man goes out there. And of course, he can't save them. But a dying man's last wish you know, to get a drink of water. When you're bleeding out, you become incredibly thirsty. You feel like you're dying of thirst. So for him to come out there and give you that water, it's just that comfort, man, that level of humanity that somebody is showing to a dying man. And he actually manages to quiet down all the soldiers throughout the night as he's fucking bringing them around water. And I mean, these are people up to this point were more than happy to kill every one of these fucking damn Yankees out there. I mean, you just got run out of your fucking city. You've been shot at all day by these people. You know what fucking kind of anger and adrenaline you probably got in you? And yet, that moment, that fucking sight, that shining light of humanity, at that moment was able to quell all of the politics, all of the war, all of the artificial bullshit that divided those men from the South from those men in the North. When that one man went over that fence and brought that fucking mercy, that fucking comfort to the enemy, they were brothers. They were the same. In that moment, both sides knew. These were dying and suffering men, and it didn't matter what side of some line they supposedly stood on. At that moment, there was much more that united us than divides us, and I think that's always true in the case of human beings. Regardless of what country or nationality or race or religion or any of the other artificial bullshit we create to divide each other or divide ourselves from each other, there's always much more in our DNA and our genetics and in our humanity that binds us. And I think that's the only reason the human race has survived this long. And then just in case you guys are wondering, so after the battle and all of that, did he get in trouble? Is he considered a fucking war criminal today? Well, here's a statue in Fredericksburg. You guys decide for yourself. So this man will forever be known as the Angel of Mary's Heights or the Angel of Fredericksburgs, he's referred to sometimes. But nobody, nobody held anything against him for what he did that night. He's considered a saint. The man's name who did that was Richard Kirkland. And just for those of you who are wondering, a couple of months later in a future battle, he was going to get killed anyway. But what was more important was that one moment, that one act, because that still lives today. So he could have been fucking Rambo, he could have been a fucking, you know, Green Beret, a Navy SEAL. He could have gone out there and killed fucking 100 men single-handedly. And it would have never had the kind of impact that that one act of mercy has had. And honestly, even with as horrific as the Battle of Fredericksburg was, that is one of the things that stands out the most and is most remembered from it. So one act of kindness and mercy can overshadow 17,000 deaths. Brutal, horrific deaths. But all right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that stoned history for this Monday. I thought I'd try to do something, you know, a war story, but with a, you know, more optimistic tone. And the nice thing about that is I think it shows you might not be able to be a general. You might not be able to be president of the United States. But it doesn't take being president of the United States or being an important and powerful person. All it takes is one individual, a private, a sergeant, anybody to step up 
and display that kind of fucking humanity, that kind of compassion, that kind of sympathy for another fucking human being. And that shit is like a fucking beacon on a hill that everybody else can rally to. So never feel like you're powerless. Never feel like you can't make a difference. guys i hope you have a wonderful rest of your monday if you're working hard today just remember it's a short week we got thanksgiving coming up all right if you haven't done so already please do subscribe to this channel ring that little bell so you get the notification when the videos go up if you enjoyed the stone history want to see me do more please give me that thumbs up they are greatly appreciated and then i'll catch you guys right back here on the next video probably with something vapey to take a look at have a great day guys peace